we're recording. So, uh, welcome to our first webinar, guys, for the Digital Leaders Growth Conference. Um, so, it's a nine webinar series over the next couple of weeks. And we're kicking off today with Michelle Flynn, um, who I've got to know over the past few weeks, who is incredible. Um, she talks about um, everything there is that needs to, be, needs to know around health and well being, mental health. Um, and she works with a lot of business owners, their teams, as well as FTSE 250 businesses, just to discuss how you can be healthy and well as an individual and be the best version of yourself. So if you follow her on LinkedIn, um, if you don't, add her. If you haven't gone to her website, go onto her website after this, because a lot of the things that she discussed is just straightforward facts which you can implement pretty much straight away. Um, things all to do with how you can get your head in the game, you know? Um, I know a lot of people are at home at the moment and it's the sixth or eighth week, isn't it, Michelle? So even I have testing moments and, you know, some of the stuff that you've been telling people is really, really um, valuable, particularly, you know, how you can get into physical, you know, if you haven't done a lot of exercise before as well, how you can uh, get yourself the best version of yourself. So, um, yeah, I think in terms of... Um, yeah, in terms of um, the, what we're doing now. So we're going to have a quick presentation from Michelle um, for roughly around about 15, 20 minutes. And then we'll have lots of questions throughout and at the end. Um, so if you do have any questions, pop them in into the webinar chat um, or the Q&A bit at the very bottom. Um, but yeah, I'll pass over to you, Michelle. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, let me get my the slide share bit up first of all, because that's always the bit that makes me slightly nervous is that I can get the technology to work. Right, I've got that. Let me get the chat now back up as well. Because exactly as Jack said, the more interactive that this can be, the better. Um, how long the talk takes depends on how many questions you've got. So feel free to ask questions um, in the chat box during it. Um, and also I'll be around at the end afterwards for Q&A as well. So that if you've got anything that you want to talk about that I haven't covered off, then we can sort of start talking at that point. Um, what would be really good is, because I can't see you, um, and to just actually check you're all there, in the chat box, can you just put where in the country you are and one word to describe how you're feeling today? Um, I'm going to put that in there as well. Um, I'm in Brighton, feeling a little bit emotional today. Um, Oh, I'm loving that, Rosine. We got some motivated, optimistic, positive. Car, what's in the water where you guys all are? <laughs> loving that. I'd like a piece of that. Um, oh, Groundhog Day, isn't it? Just sort of wake up and go. Yep, same again. Um, Secret Cinema, the, um, where you go and you kind of get into a movie set, is doing virtual screenings now. And they actually did Groundhog Day the other day, which I thought was a Slightly odd choice, because I just need to look at my own life for Groundhog Day. I don't need to watch a film about it at the moment. Um, excellent. So we've got people from Bristol, Lake District, Cornwall, Exeter, Buckinghamshire, London, Manchester, Shepparton. Loving that. Southwest London. Okay. Bracknell. Given no thought whatsoever to how <laughs> I'm feeling. <laughs> like that, Russell. By the end of this, hopefully you'll have an idea. Um, oh, David. We're going to have some fun today. I like to try and make health fun. People tend to kind of go, oh God, this is all going to be serious and it is not at all. So firstly, let me tell you a little bit about who I am and what is a health coach. So firstly, the job of a health coach is to stop people getting sick in the first place. So doctors are absolutely brilliant for curing people. But sadly, we've got a bit of a sick care system where we just focus on curing people rather than a healthcare system where we stop them getting sick in the first place. So that is my job. And basically, I work with people um, to look at where the imbalance is in their life. And this is not just about food and exercise, although that is important. Ultimately, if your career or your relationship is out of sync, or if you are stressed and exhausted, you're not going to make the right food choices anyway. So for me, it's about taking the body as a whole, imagining it like a mass of cogs, and for all the cogs to function properly, they've got to actually all be in line, whereas one little thing goes out of place, suddenly everything stops working. Um, I became a health coach, um, purely personal experience. So I've actually got 24 years recruitment experience. 
I'm not here to talk to you about recruitment. Um, but what happened was over the last five years, I went on a personal journey. I kept getting sick all the time. I was absolutely exhausted and I was gaining weight for no apparent reason. It got to the point where I was found passed out on the bathroom floor. No alcohol was involved. And it was like, do you know what? Enough's enough. I'm kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I was fortunate enough to start working with a health coach. Had no idea what that meant. I thought she was going to talk to me about fats, carbs, and proteins, because surely that's how you lose weight. Not at all. She talked to me about stress, how stress impacts the body, some of the science. And from that point on, changed my whole view on everything. Um, and since then, touch wood, I haven't been sick once in two years. I don't fall asleep at three o'clock anymore. And I've lost two and a half stone in weight, even though I eat without counting calories. And I actually probably exercise less because now I understand how the body actually works. So I decided to study, which is odd because I'm in my 40s and I thought my brain surely isn't gonna remember anything. But it turns out when you're studying something you're interested in, it's actually quite good fun. Um, studied to become a health coach, had no plan to actually be one, but then people were so interested in the changes that had happened that I found myself with clients. And as Jack kindly said, I now run a full-time health coach business I do corporate talks, corporate one-to-one -one coaching, and also individual one-to-one -one coaching for people who are just kind of, they're surviving, but they want to thrive. It's like they're getting through the day, but actually they want to live a great life, a long life, and a happy life. So that's a quick summary as to who I am and what it is that I do and why I'm here talking to you today. But let's talk about the subject that we're here to discuss. To beat COVID-19, we're all going to have to live very differently. We're already living differently. People have been in lockdown now for six, seven, eight weeks. So we've already made lots of changes. But following the um, announcement from Boris yesterday, if anyone could quite figure out all of what he was saying, basically we're carrying on doing pretty much the same as what we were. So we still need to keep adapting. But when it comes to this talk, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to talk about today because everyone's out there talking about today. I'm gonna to be looking forward at how we need to get through this, how we need to get to the finish line. And this is a great quote, that a good hockey player plays where the puck is, but a great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. It's a bit of a mouthful. But point being is let's look ahead. Let's look at how we're gonna be feeling. Let's look at how we can cope with that to make sure that physically, mentally, emotionally, we've got the resilience that we need. So every one of these talks that I do, I always start with the science. Don't want anyone to think that I'm talking about any hippie woo-woo stuff. So let's talk science first. Change, which we are in at the moment, a massive period of change. This creates fear and uncertainty. And fear is a primary emotion. We've all felt it at some point, And generally, you can see it in people's faces. So like this little guy, anyone that's seen Home Alone looks quite fearful. And this is completely natural. It's a healthy response because what it does is it basically teaches us how to avoid danger in the future. So let's take an example. You're crossing the road, a car beeps the horn at you, you get a quick bit of fear kick in, and then you learn, I shouldn't just randomly cross the road, I should use a zebra crossing, like the Beatles did. Let's use the most famous zebra crossing in the world. What I love is someone has also done the social distancing version of it. But we have learned how to cross the road safely. So what happens is we process information, we look at what's gone on in the past, and that's how we basically create scenarios for the future. It is how we live as human beings. Hay fever, great example when you come to health. Hay fever, we all know from past experience that come the sort of the springtime, the pollen count goes up, hay fever symptoms kick in, and then we've got itchy eyes, runny noses, but we're not fearful of it. We go to the chemist, we get the relevant medication, we take it and the symptoms go away. It's not a nice thing to have, but we know we're gonna be okay because of past experience. The challenge we've got now is that, I say very few of us, but I'm probably taking a good bet that no one on here has ever faced a, pandem a pandemic like we're facing now. Not unless you're alive in 1918, which I'm probably betting that none of us were. If you were, well done. So in uh, 1918, we had Spanish flu. 
And the challenge that we've got is because no one has ever been through this before, we don't know how to deal with it. We don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know how it's going to impact people. Is there going to be a second wave? When will we get a vaccine or a cure? So we can't simulate the future scenarios of that. And what happens is when you take fear and you add in that uncertainty, that's where anxiety kicks in. And now anxiety is a secondary emotion, often invisible, to not only to ourselves, but to other people. So here's an example. This is my wedding day. Any excuse to get a wedding day picture in, surely. So there on my face is joy and happiness, which of course I was feeling. I wanted to be getting married. But behind the, the mask, absolutely there was fear, uncertainty, anxiety. It's getting married. It's scary stuff. You don't know what the future holds. Of course, you hope that it's going to be all sort of beds of roses, but we don't know that. But I was able to hide that. My dad, bless him, not quite so able to hide his emotions. And it's an emotion that is characterized by feelings of tension. So that tight feeling in your chest, those worried thoughts that you get, which are the what ifs. And they're always negative what ifs, aren't they? They're never a positive. Oh, what if I won the lottery? They're always what if this goes on longer than we hope. And physical changes, so sweaty palms, heart racing, jelly legs. Sometimes we get so anxious we can't even see because our bodies are physically shutting down. It's not a new emotion though. Most of us have experienced anxiety at some point in our lives. The challenge that we've got at the moment though, we've turned the volume up. We are at high level anxiety, which makes complete sense. We're in isolation. We've never done this before. No one ever signed up to being within the four walls 24 seven, particularly with members of their family. And then you throw in some homeschooling. You're living in a situation where you're having to cope with all of these different pressures of life, whether that is working or whether that is furlough, whether that is homeschooling or not having kids, whether that's being on your own, we're all dealing with challenges. And there's a brilliant quote, which I wish I'd come up with. Don't know who came up with it, but it says, we are not all in the same boat. They should stop saying it. We're all in the same storm, but everybody's boat is different. Some people are in a massive luxury yacht. Other people are in a dinghy with a hole in it. But there was a great suggestion that what we can do is we can all actually use our ropes to pull each other's boats to shore, which I thought was really cute. But there's something else that we're adding to our anxiety. We've got this other challenge, social media. Basically, the virus itself, you can contain it by social distancing, washing your hands and self-isolating. But with social media, it's basically coughing and sneezing all over you every time you look at it. Every time you see a picture like that, what happens? Panic kicks in. What am I going to do about food? Or even worse, what am I going to do about toilet roll? And then this happens. How much toilet roll do you actually need? And suddenly, we've created this whole panic pandemic. It's not even about the virus anymore. It's about feeling panicked about panic. And what happens when we feel that bit more science view is the prefrontal cortex of our brain is the part of the brain that makes rational decisions. It's our logic. And scientifically, when we are panicked, it switches off. We basically lose our mind. Our bodies say you are not in any fit state to make a decision. So I'm going to take away the ability to do it. And then what happens is our emotional brain takes over. And for anyone that's ever done any CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, or has read The Chimp Paradox, they'll understand that the chimp is our emotional brain. And this chimp is going crazy. It's four times more powerful than the logic. So although our logic would say, this is a glass of water, my chimp is saying, is it water? Is it vodka? If you drink it, you're going to spill it on yourself. And suddenly your mind goes into all sorts of craziness. I'm loving that you're reading this at the moment. We must talk about it. This is such a good book. Um, and it's nicely written in kind of relatively small chapters. So it's not all too heavy in science. It just talks basically a lot about the chimp. But makes sense for you to understand your brain. But we all just have to stop. Firstly, stop and take a drink. If you've all joined me on that one. But we all just have to stop. This is all getting too much. Of course we're feeling scared. Of course we're feeling anxious. This is so understandable. And actually, no one else understands how every, anyone individually is feeling because we are all so impacted differently by this. 
but we will get through this together. We've got to believe it because if we give up hope, then what's the point? We will all be allowed back onto the beach watching the sunrise or the sunset. I'm guessing that's the sunset, otherwise it'd be a bit early in the morning. But with our friends and our families, we will be able to hold them again. We don't know when, but we will. So I'm gonna give you a very quick recap on the tools to help you today. As I said, I'm not focusing on this. Everyone is now a health expert. Everyone is posting hints and tips. So there is so much out there. I know this because I used to get quite a lot of hits on my social media and suddenly my traffic has dropped through the floor, which I'm sure the people on here in the industries and that that you're in, you can appreciate the challenges of kind of how you actually reach people at the moment. So I'm gonna make these really quick. If anyone has further questions about any of these, we can chat at the end or put them in the chat box or speak to me individually. But it's really simple. There's one rule when it comes to diet, eat real food as unprocessed as possible, food that you recognize, food that is basically single ingredient. No one can tell us that eating fruit and vegetables isn't good for you. So at the moment, cut the processed food, cut the ready meals, focus on the real food to help boost your immune systems. New hobbies. If you've got time to learn Spanish and play the guitar, brilliant. If you haven't, so what? No one is expecting you to be perfect. No one is expecting you to come out of this with some new skill that you never had before. If you want to, and if you've got time, brilliant. But don't feel bad about it. Do what you can do, and if the only thing you can do each day is get out of bed in the morning, you're winning. Connection, it's a massive one. Biggest cause of depression is loneliness. We are all struggling at the moment where we're missing people. Um, so connect with people in some way whether that is friends and family, whether that's with local community, find a way to have a bit of a purpose with other people. Stimulants, alcohol. Can you actually put in the chat group if you are drinking more or earlier in the day than you usually would? I love that. Russell's trying to learn to play the piano, but it turns out he's got no talent. <laughs> Get yourself on Britain's Got Talent. Be right fitting in there. Um, yeah, we've got more, more. Suddenly the sun, oh, stopped. Loving that. Okay, got a bit of a mixture there. Don't drink. God, we've got some good people. Learn Spanish is an amazing language. <laughs> Had Corona beer in my cupboard. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll try some Spanish. I'm, I've got a French GCSE, but I'm still terrible at that. But it's almost like the sun comes out and it's like rosé o'clock or it's a way of separating the day from the night. Um, or if alcohol isn't your thing, then maybe it's actually coffee. And maybe you're finding that you're drinking more coffee than you normally would. So it's about actually being aware of the stimulants that you're having, being aware of why you're having them, and just being a bit careful. And then definitely more coffee. All right, we're talking about coffee. People in the chat box, tell me how many coffees you have a day. God, we had someone that gave up smoking. Jack, six. Oh, it's crazy. Okay. I used to only have one, but now I have six a day. Yeah. It's just funny. How's your sleep going with that? I was going to ask you that, actually, because usually I sleep like a baby, so nothing can wake me up. But in the last week, I can't, like, I've been going to sleep at half two or three, but... It's just strange. I have loads of, it's not the case, I don't feel anxious, but I feel really excited. Um, so the reason for that is that caffeine does exactly the same thing to your body as stress does. So when you have too much caffeine, your adrenaline and your cortisol goes up. You tells your body you're in danger. It's why you get that heart racing feeling. So yeah. there's the physical feelings of too much coffee, um, but caffeine has got a six hour half-life. So a cup of coffee at lunchtime 12 noon is the same as a half a cup at six in the evening and a quarter of a cup at midnight you would never wake up at midnight take a sip of coffee and expect to get back to sleep mm -hmm. so my rule with coffee and remember this isn't just coffee caffeine is in tea green tea chocolate energy drinks um what else am i missing there there's something else is in as well but caffeine is in a lot of stuff and my suggestion is don't have anything with caffeine in after say 11 in the morning if you have it in the afternoon it's going to impact your sleep yeah. so if you're noticing that you're struggling to sleep 
you go, what's changed? Oh, I'm having six coffees a day. <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely all the chocolate as well. So, so uh, chocolate and coffee, it's my weakness. Yeah, exactly. So have a little look at what you're doing with those because, um, as I said, everything that we do impacts everything else. And if you kind of, you get stuck in that cycle of I'm tired, I'll have a coffee and then oh, I've had a coffee and now I can't sleep, so I'm tired and you just go round in this. Tries to mm. switch the matcha. Um, so what I would say, um, caffeine is in Coke as well, absolutely. With matcha, same as green tea, be a bit careful because although it's really good for you, um, again, it has got caffeine. I've had a full panic attack after having too many green teas in a day. So just be a bit wary of how much you're having. Preferably in the afternoon, go to things like herbal teas. Rooibos is a um, caffeine, naturally caffeine-free tea. Um, decaf coffee, if you really have to, although it's not caffeine-free and they've used chemicals to strip the decaf. Um, so have your coffee, have one, two, first thing in the morning, have it all lovely out of your nice filter coffee machine, but just be a little bit aware of how much you're having. And then media consumption, we all know it's terrible, it's depressing. They're not telling us anything positive or they're telling us things that don't make sense or is it fake news? So whether this is social media or the news, just be aware of how much you're actually taking in because it is just putting us in that downward spiral of negativity. But as I said, not gonna focus on kind of the today bit, although I'm happy to talk about all of those. Um, I'm gonna talk about the stuff that's really connected to COVID and now. Um, so I thought we got a little chart here. The bottom left calm, that is pre-COVID. That is when we were just living our lives, generally calm. And then we start to hear about China and some stress kind of kicks in and we're watching the news and we're like, oh, still it's China. And then suddenly we realize that this isn't just staying over there, it's suddenly coming to us. And then our first kind of peak is when we all go into lockdown. Suddenly we're like, oh my God, I have to work from home. Have I got the technology? If you're a boss, can my team work from home? Um, if you're not able to work from home, then how does that impact you? And we had that first spike. And then what happens is things start to settle down. We realize that technology is great and there's the furlough scheme and the government is doing everything that they can to support people. And there's all this stuff and we kind of get used to it. And then what happens is we go spike again because suddenly we realize that we're not just staying in for three weeks. We're not just staying in for six weeks. We don't actually know when this is going to finish. So we're now back up at what I call the second wave, that second point of, oh my goodness, this is suddenly not some weird dream. And the reason that we're finding it more and more difficult as time goes on, and I have found over the last two weeks, so many more people contacting me, is that the first two weeks are like being on holiday. You go on a holiday, either with your friends, your family, on your own, and you're used to potentially having a two week break from work. And then suddenly after two weeks, you're like, oh, actually, I don't really want to be with my family 24-7 or I don't want to be in my house 24-7. Um, and that's when you start to kind of kick in with these new feelings, which we are finding. So let's get practical. Here are my top 10 tips. First one, please put a yes in the chat box if you are exhausted from too many video calls. And this is ironic because we are on a video call. I do appreciate that. But there is such a thing as Zoom gloom, where people are literally falling out of the end of the day because they are exhausted from suddenly having to be on Zoom calls with everybody or Teams or Meet or whatever technology that you're using. We are exhausted. We have suddenly stared people in the face more than we ever have before. So my tip one, pick the phone up. I do all my one-to-one -one coaching on the phone. I refuse to do it on video. I want people stood up, walking around. If you've got a balcony, if you've got a garden or a front step, or you can take your daily exercise, get out and about. Same with your family. Did you used to always do FaceTime with your family or did you used to phone them? And now suddenly it's like you have to FaceTime your parents every day. I love my parents, but I don't need to see them. I can just chat to them on the phone. And sometimes people are actually a bit more honest when they're not staring at them in the face. So tip one. Where possible, if it is a one-to-one, -one, so if you are not slide sharing like I am, or you're not doing a group thing, or you're not doing a pub quiz, just talk to someone on the phone. Put your headphones in, go for a walk, have a good chat. Oh my God, the stress of getting the tech to use properly. 
I'm meant to be doing two talks this week and they want me to use Google Meet. And for some reason, I could not get into Google Meet. This was so stressful. Turns out I just needed to update my software, which I have now done. But seriously, technology, it is wonderful. And can you even imagine being in this situation without it? But at the same time, just causes more stress, get away from the screens. It is exhausting for our eyes, our brains, our bodies. Stand up, walk around. Tip two, and this is obviously for people that are living with people. I appreciate this is different for people who are on their own. Um, but as I said, we never signed up to living with friends and family 24 seven. I love my husband, but I do not need to see him all day, every day. Fortunately, he is busy with work in another room. So we tend to try and avoid each other. But it's claustrophobic, isn't it? It's that point of I just need some space, particularly if people have got kids at home as well. Suddenly, you don't have the commute to get a bit of downtime. You don't have the standing in the queue at prep to have a bit of downtime. We're just with people and it's too much. And the same as then sort of if you're not living with people, but suddenly this pressure to be talking to people all the time on pub quizzes and everything else that's happening. It's like, just stop. Find some time to yourself. Make a rule with the people that you live with that if you are drinking out of your red coffee cup and you're sat in the garden or on the front step, that means no one can come and talk to you. Or if you're in the bath and the door is locked, that means the kids cannot come into the bathroom. You have to find some space to yourself to just switch off a little bit. Just let your brain relax, just to let your mind wander. Maybe read a book, maybe do nothing. When do we last do nothing? I'll get to that. Next one. Put in the chat box if you are completely bored of the food that you are eating. It is like a constant version of ready, steady cook of what is it that I can make? Because we can no longer pop out to Pret or Itsu or Byron Burger or Tost or wherever it is you might have your lunch of choice. And suddenly we're just desperately trying to find time to feed ourselves in the day. So bored of the food that we're eating, bored of the routines that we're in. We talked earlier about Groundhog Day. Oh look, same again. Bored of the route that you go for a walk, bored of the type of exercise that you choose to do or the people that you live with or whatever. So it's like variety is the spice of life. So try and mix it up. Try and eat some different foods. Try and cook some new recipes. If you normally do high intensity exercise, maybe try some yoga. Or if you normally walk a certain route, try a different route. Or phone somebody different that you haven't spoken to. It's like the boredom is kicking in. We're all feeling it. It's perfectly normal. But just mix it up a bit. Find something that's different that you can do. Tip four. We talked about exercise earlier. Thank goodness we can now do unlimited exercise. It's brilliant that there is that option, but don't really know how that all quite works. You can go out and sit and have a sunbathe. But so... Great that we can go out and exercise, but we don't have the gym, we don't have a swimming pool, we don't have the yoga studio or whatever is your choice of thing. So it's really important that you do exercise. Forget physically, we all know it's good physically, but for your mental health, which is being tested for all of us, we need to exercise. It releases all your happy hormones. So whether that is doing a bit of yoga in a corner or whether that's running up and down the stairs or whether that is doing some squats every time you put the kettle on, there was someone in here who is, um, every time they see the kettle, they're having coffee. Do some squats whilst your coffee's brewing. Um, do some lunges whilst you're sort of brushing your teeth. Might get a bit messy, but who knows? But just do some exercise, really important. Makes you feel good. There is no one ever who has done exercise and afterwards has said, I wish I didn't do that. So exercise in small spaces. Now this might seem like a little odd one. Take a holiday. So on average, by this time of year, most people have taken eight working days off. And suddenly at the moment, the average is three. Because understandably, people are not wanting to use their holiday time um, because they can't go anywhere. But we all need to take a break. People are getting to burnout. They are exhausted. So take a day off. Take a little staycation and not have to be on any Zoom calls. What a treat. If you were fortunate enough to have some outside space and you like camping, put your tent up in it or get your rucksack out, put all your holiday clothes in it, unpack them, wear your holiday clothes around where you live. If you would normally go to maybe Spain on holiday, maybe cook some Spanish food. If you've got an area where you live, maybe like a corner of your lounge or a bedroom that sort of maybe your flatmate was in, but they've gone home to live with their parents. Maybe 
in a week's time, go and stay in that room, have a little holiday in a different part of your house or eat dinner in a different part of your house. We moved our dining table literally from like here to here, like just pretty much swap the direction of it. And suddenly at least I feel like I'm eating dinner somewhere different. So take a little break, maybe have a wall, paint the wall at the scene of a beach or a mountain or whatever it is that you like in your holiday. But people are so burnt out. People are completely exhausted, emotionally drained. How much better did we feel after having a three day weekend? Take a bit of time out. If you're running a team, I don't know who's on here, I don't know what your situations are, but maybe if you're running a team, maybe just tell them to finish at one o'clock on Friday. Maybe just give people a bit of a break or maybe don't make that first Zoom team call at 8.30 in the morning. Maybe just make it a 10 one day to just give people a chance to just have a bit of a rest. I might have been being a bit controversial there. Can't see any of you, so I'm saying it anyway. Right, treat yourself. I do not mean anything financially extravagant with this at all. I mean the little things. Normally at Easter, we go to the sweet shop and most people would buy a Cadbury's cream egg because you do it Easter. So if you go to the chemist to buy some paracetamol, maybe pick up a little nail varnish to paint your toenails. Or maybe next time you go to get some fruit and veg, maybe buy something you wouldn't normally buy, maybe a mango. You're absolutely right there, um, Roisin, about got to be kind to yourselves. Got to have something to look forward to. I was doing a coaching call before this and the thing that was upsetting the girl more than anything was she's got nothing to look forward to. Can't plan ahead. You haven't got that holiday booked in. So just have a little thing. Treat yourself. We had a bottle of olive oil arrive today from um, a special olive oil place. Oh my God, the joy at a bottle of olive oil. It's like, it is the simple things at the moment that just are so much to look forward to. This one, waste some time. Put in the chat box if you are finding you have never been busier. From the minute you get up in the morning, when you suddenly feel you've got to do all of these things, bearing in mind now that people are having to make their own lunch when potentially they would be going out and getting lunch, or maybe you get some support somehow with the kids. If obviously your kids are not at school, you're having to do that. Or maybe you would have some, someone come in and clean your house, which now you don't have. And we're having to do all these things. You want to go to the supermarket. Instead of just nipping in, it might take you three hours to queue at the supermarket, get your shopping and come back. We are so busy trying to do our jobs. Those people who are still working are desperately trying to work so hard to make sure that the businesses stay afloat for the people who have been furloughed. Those people who are not able to work at home at the moment are obviously sort of trying to work out what that means for them and make sure that they can come back sort of fighting the minute where they're kind of allowed to. We're all trying to find our way in this. And yet, so busy. Completely right, Natalie. Days are flying. You're like, I can't believe what time's now. One o'clock. Where did that go? I got up at quarter past six this morning. I feel like I haven't even, well, I'm not even sure I've had breakfast yet. But the days are just going. And sometimes you've got to stop and just waste some time. Watch that box set that you've been threatening to watch you haven't had time to do. Have a nap on the sofa. Just listen to a podcast. Just do nothing. Because it is okay. We don't have to be baking bread, learning Spanish, although we should learn Spanish out of all the languages because it sounds like a good language. Um, but whatever, do you know what I mean? We don't have to be constantly filling every minute of the day. It's okay to just stop. Ah, interesting about Chernobyl, right? I didn't want to watch that because I thought it'd be really depressing. Russell, if it's any good, let me know if it's any good because I am looking for other things to watch. Afterlife is my one at the moment. Not a fan of Ricky Gervais, but Afterlife's great fun. Um, and then, of course, there's Killing Eve, which is back. And for anyone on here that wants a weepy, This Is Us. It's on Amazon Prime, I think. Absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, I'll have a little look at Chernobyl when I'm feeling that uh, maybe I need a little emotional uh, release. Okay, forward planning. How the hell are we meant to do this? How can we forward plan? Those people that didn't, all those people that didn't think about the fact that now they need to exercise at home and then try to buy themselves a dumbbell and realize you couldn't get one or it was about 400 pounds. Or you've got to be planning ahead. It's like if the next bank holiday weekend in two weeks, three weeks, whenever it is, if you want to paint the shed, you need to plan now because you need to get to B&Q. It's going to be a long queue. 
or you need to get it ordered on an Amazon and the waiting time might be longer. Whatever it is that you're thinking that you're going to want to be doing in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, plan it now. If you want to get new games in for the kids, if you want to get a new recipe book for yourself, other people are going to be thinking the same stuff and what you want could potentially be sold out. So plan forward, think about what you're going to want to do for your time. Again, it gives you something to look forward to. Now this one I know is a tough one, but it is really important. Again, I talked about the chimp paradox, the basis of cognitive behavioral therapy. This is basically the summary of it, that your thoughts create your feelings, create your actions. So you have a situation, something happens. So we've got COVID-19. The thought, I'm going to put it in terms of work-related stuff because it's easier to sort of keep it general. You wake up in the morning, your thought is, I don't want to work at home today. And let's be honest, we've all had those thoughts. What then happens off the back of that thought is you start to feel demotivated, uninspired, lethargic. And then the reaction to that is that either you're going to pull a duvet day, no one knows whether you got out of bed or not, you're you. If you go to work, you're not going to do a great job at it. So you need to think of something positive because positive thoughts, if you wake up in the morning and you say, I'm going to have a great day today. And even if you don't know how you're going to have that great day, watch line of duty. That's a good way to have a great day. Such a good series. Um, but if you say to yourself, first thing in the morning, I'm going to have a good day. If you wake up and you don't know how just say, I'm going to have a good day somehow. Your emotions are going to feel more positive. Your actions are going to feel more positive. It is science of the brain and the way that the mind works. And here's some examples. You could be letting yourself dwell on the fact you're stuck at home, or you could switch that to a positive and say, I get to be safe at home. You could think I'll get sick, or you could go, well, I'm doing everything that I'm told, so therefore my chances of getting sick are reduced, and our NHS is amazing. You could think I'll run out of stuff. No, nope, you're prepared. And actually what amazing communities there are out there if we do need anything. You could panic the stuff shutting down. Let's look at China and Italy. Things shut down. The shops are open. We don't need to worry about that. And you could panic that there's too much uncertainty. Yes, there is. But let's not focus on what you can't control. Focus on what you can. Focus on the things that you can control for you within your household to make sure that you come out of this stronger. And my final one, and I am going through them quite quick because I want to make sure we got time for Q&A at the end, but this is where we're going to get practical. Can you put a little note in the chat? Yes, if you meditate regularly, tried if you've tried it and couldn't do it, or no if you've never done it. So I can get a bit of an idea of where we're at. Oh, we've got a daily on there. Tried, okay. Never tried, never. Daily calm, brilliant. Okay, so we've got a nice little mixture in there. Tried, can't do it. Okay, I will change your way of thinking on this and then I'm gonna invite you all to an event that's on this week. It's a free event and it will rock your world. So, the science. It's called meditation, it's called breathing, it's called breath work, it's called mindfulness, whatever you wanna call it. But it is scientifically proven that by taking a few deep breaths, it switches back on that logic part of your brain. It is as simple as that. It breaks the panic cycle. It also rebalances your stress hormones. So when you're stressed, your adrenaline and your cortisol go up, slowing your breathing down, brings them back to normal, gets all your body functioning properly. This is the most powerful thing that anyone can do as far as I'm concerned. When they interviewed many top global experts, execs, athletes, and ask them the one thing that they do every morning, they all meditate. This isn't something that is just people sat around kind of with incense and oming, although what's an om, an outward breath. Anyone on here addicted to smoking? Ever thought about what that is? Breathe in, breathe out. Maybe it's not actually the cigarettes that are addictive. 63% reduction in anxiety just by a short daily breath practice. This only has to be a matter of minutes, which is what I'm gonna show you. We're gonna go through a technique, it's called Shamatha. What I love is that they've just made it really simple. It means to remain calm. And it is four, four, eight. So now I'm having to trust that you're all gonna do this because I can't see you, but I want you to sit up straight with your feet flat on the floor. And I want your hands, palms facing up, somewhere comfortable on your lap or on your knees. I want your back straight, and in a minute I want you to kind of relax. 
When we get going, I'm gonna want you to shut your eyes, but let me explain it first. Now, where possible, I want you to breathe in and out of your nose. Your nose is for breathing and smelling and your mouth is for talking and eating. So if possible, breathe through your nose. If that's not possible because you've got sinus problems or a reason you can't, you can do it through your mouth, but if possible, in and out of the nose. We're doing a simple four, four, eight. So that is breathe in for a count of four, which I will talk you through, hold for a count of four, and then breathe out for a count of eight. Now I'm gonna talk you through two rounds of that, and then I want you to do two rounds at your own pace, because everybody's counts are different, everybody's breath is different. So I'll count you through for two rounds, you then do two rounds at your own pace, and then if you could put a word in the chat that tells me how you feel afterwards, and I will take a rough guess of when you've actually finished breathing, because I can't see you. If we're all in the room together, I could see when your eyes are open. I can't do that. So close your eyes, relax your shoulders, relax your face, put your hands comfortably in your lap. And here we go. Remember, if possible, through your nose. So breathe in for four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Breathe out for eight seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. In for four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Out for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now two rounds at your own pace. Okay, if you're still going, keep breathing. If you're finished, drop me a little word in there that just sums up how you feel. Floating, love that. Relaxed. Heart rate, yep, lightheaded, more relaxed, calm. What I'm trying to kind of show with that is that was a minute. I saw a vortex. <laughs> Dennis, I'm going to tell you about this event. You've got to come and join us because you're going to fly. But the point being is just with one minute, you physically can feel all your body relaxing. You can feel your stress hormones reducing. You can feel the logic turn back on almost like, whoa, now I know what I need to do. And people so underestimate just the power of breathing properly. It helps with amazing night's sleep helps with recovering from disease, helps prevent disease. It's like so powerful, it's free. And yet people don't do it. But what happens is they try it and they can't get on with it. Here's another way, if you can't remember 448, it's like this, and this is a great one for kids. You go breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, and just keep doing that until you feel that state of calm coming. But for all of you who have said they've tried, you've tried it and you couldn't do it, it's called a practice. The reason that building meditation as a habit is so hard is that hab habits are created by emotions. So you have to feel success to want to carry on doing it. And with meditation, often the first time you do it, you go, oh, I didn't work. I haven't been able to, I'm not calm, I'm fidgety, I wanna be on my phone. So you don't do it again. But if I gave you a pair of running shoes and told you to run a marathon, you'd tell me you'd need to train for it. It's exactly like meditation. You've got to find the voice of the person you like. You've got to find the type. Do you like the simple one, two? Do you like body scanning? Do you like visualization? Do you like high intensity breath work? It's like whatever it is, try it, find it. We all like something different. You all like different sports. You all like different exercises. You all like different colors. Same as meditation. There's so much out there. We talked on the chat about calm users and headspace. Personally, I love calm. 
I've got a discount code from a podcast I listen to if anyone wants it. It gives you 66% off. I do calm every morning for 10 minutes. There's a little daily calm that they release. Just makes me feel brilliant. Sometimes I have a good cry. Sometimes I have a little laugh. Sometimes I kind of feel like I should have a little nap. But it just sets me up for the day. Headspace, it's a bit like calm, different voices. Insight, Insight Timer, it's a free app, which is great. Daily Calm, doesn't it? it? Always gets you thinking. So whatever it is that you need, I'm going to put the name of something on here and I must actually just add it into the deck. Um, love to learn to. So Wednesday and Sunday at 8.30 p.m. on Love to Learn to Instagram Live, there is a free breathwork session. It's run by my husband. He is a marketing manager. He is not woo-woo. He talks about science and then we all breathe together. He plays great music. We normally get somewhere between 40 and 50 people all sharing this experience, all talking about their experiences afterwards. People are sleeping brilliantly. They're feeling calm afterwards. They're having sort of emotional thoughts of kind of situations that they're finding answers to. If you are free, Wednesday or Sunday, 8.30 p.m., please try and join one of these. He does them also little short 15 minute ones each day at some point around lunchtime if you actually just need a bit of a chance to breathe. But it is really simple. The power of the breath is phenomenal. Please say it's called Love to Learn To. So I put it in the chat. Um, so the idea of love to learn to is, for example, love to eat, learn to cook, love to breathe, learn to meditate. The idea is we should always be learning. That's where the fun happens. Um, haven't put the link, I've just put the name. Oh, hang on, all panelists. Have I been chatting in that? And not. Have I been chatting in that and then haven't? So, sorry. Love to learn to. I think you can see it now. Wednesday and Sunday. It'd be so much easier if I just put this actually in my deck. Um, there you go. If you search Love to Learn to on Instagram, it will come up. If not, contact me and I'll send you the link to it anyway. Um, but yeah, have a look at that. It's brilliant. He never planned to do it virtually. He planned to just do it with people in person, but we can't do that now. And this is when we need this more than anything. So to summarize, because I know I've completely gone over Jack, I'm sorry, my talk was never gonna take that amount of time. Um, be calm, breathe. Whatever it is that you need to find calm in your day, do it. Be kind, be kind to the people you live with. You've got to be patient. Be kind to your neighbors and your community, and most importantly, be kind to yourself. And be connected with people somehow. Be connected virtually with your friends and family, but if you can find some way to go and be part of the local community to help people, nothing is more rewarding than helping somebody else. So, my last slide, I post loads of hints and tips on all my different social medias, so whichever is your social media of choice, um, there's my website if you want to drop me a message. We're going to open up the Q&A now anyway, um, so anyone's got any questions. Um, I don't know how it works if they can unmute themselves or whether you just have to put it in the chat. Um, but if anyone doesn't want to share things publicly, please contact me privately and I'm more than happy to help you with anything you need. So I'm going to stop the slide share now and hand over to Jack, hand over to anyone that's got any questions for me and hope that you're all actually still here. Any questions, guys? So everyone goes really shy. I know. <laughs> They're like, oh, can I be the person that admits that I'm going to bed too late because I'm watching Netflix too much? Um, or one of the best things that I heard is, uh, and I'm just going to talk about this because I don't know anyone who's on here, but people are talking about this baby boom. Really? How's that going to happen? Everyone's too tired. Everyone's got too much exhaustion from Zoom calls. Um, anyway, another bit of a random point. Um, do you recommend meditation once a day or more often? Um, personally, um, I like to do it first thing in the morning. It gets me set up for the day. I like to put a sleep meditation on when I go to bed. Anyone who's struggling with sleep, best tip. Um, I rarely get past about probably 10 seconds in the evening of the sleep one. And then I do breath work twice a week. But Anytime that you just feel that you need a little bit of calm, it only needs to be for a minute. It might be one way I get people to build habits when I'm working with them with habits is going, every time you put the kettle on, what takes a minute to boil the kettle? Two minutes, just do a bit of breathing. Because 
suddenly you might find that throughout the day you've actually had a good amount of time to actually just calm yourself. Um, but just start small, start with building that tiny habit. It's all about tiny habits. If we start to try and build a habit that's too big, we won't stick to it. Um, advice for job loss during this time. Um, I know that is really difficult and this is kind of one of the awful things that is going on. What I would say is do not be afraid to reach out and ask people for help. Um, I've got a friend and he hasn't got any work and he was too embarrassed to actually contact people that we know to say I'm struggling for work. And it's like, actually, don't be embarrassed to say to people that, um, have you got any work? Is there anything I could do to help? Um, and it's a bit of a hard one. Jack, you might be a better person when it comes to kind of finding jobs at, at this point. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a very difficult situation at the moment, but I, I do strongly feel it's only going to be short term, but more than happy to, to pick up with you after this, um, have a conversation. So if you message me on LinkedIn um, or email me at jack.johnson at blu-digital.co.uk, um, we can pick up and just have a conversation. I've been having lots of conversations with people over the past few weeks. And uh, as you said, I think it really helps just speaking to other people, doesn't it? just in terms of um, just understanding that other people are in the same situation and you're not alone. So oh, I love that. Look, we've already got Carly and Roisin linking with each other. Look at that, community. Connections. Absolutely. Never be afraid to ask. Um, what nighttime meditation do I do? Um, sometimes I put calm on. I tried the Matthew McConaughey sleep um, story that's on calm. <laughs> I could not take it seriously. All I kept hearing was Wolf of Wall Street. Do, 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 do. I was like, I can't listen to that. Um, so I generally just put a sort of, a, they, you can have start and you clench every part of your body and then let it release and your body kind of feels relaxing. Um, so I quite enjoy that one. Um, but again, it's about some people just like the sound of birds or the sound of the waves or some white noise or some people like the stories. This works really good for kids as well. So if your kids are not sleeping, then this is a good one for them too. Um, what else? Da -da -da. Da -da. Sent out 80, mostly direct. Brilliant about contacting the hiring managers, Russell. I think we've got to use everything. It's like, who are the hiring managers that are in your space? Who are the recruiters that are in your space? Um, is there things that maybe sort of you're thinking about that you haven't done before that you might want to do? Um, that is this an opportunity to take a bit of a realignment of kind of where you want to go with your career and what you want to look like? Is there that company that you've always wanted to work for, but for some reason sort of haven't ever kind of got to that point? So I think that um, it's about keeping that sense of purpose and keeping that kind of get the CV sent out get the contacts happening, get the links happening on LinkedIn, come to things like this. I know that Jack has set up an amazing conference with lots of great speakers over the next kind of 10 days. You never quite know who's going to appear on one of these things and who you're going to have a conversation with. Um, so yeah, that'd be my advice. How did I become a health coach? I studied, there's an um, institute in America called the Institute for Integrity. It's a word I can't say, which is hilarious. That I've studied at a place I can't say. Integrative nutrition um and it's a 12-month program it's all studied online it's all the top world experts and my health coach had done that course so i kind of just jumped on the bandwagon and got really lucky because i love the course um, i am very honest about the challenges of being a health coach um, and the difficulties making money being a health coach because you've got to find clients and my background is recruitment so i'm very fortunate that i have a large network of people and also, um, I now work with a lot of recruiters because I understand their lives, I understand the challenges, but also I've done a lot of work with companies in the e-commerce space, in the tech space, um, in the creative space. So um, I have got a very large network. So anytime anyone gives us advice on health coach, I'm like, brilliant, but just think about the money and what you need to earn. Right, using, so do, Using search fields and LinkedIn is a good way. Videos on YouTube. Thanks, Russell. That's some excellent tips on there. Do you think if you have anxiety, it will ever really go away or you learn to manage it? Um, I think, Carly, it depends on how extreme you have it. 
I've had panic attacks before. The first one that I had, I thought that my tongue was basically enlarging in my throat and I thought that I couldn't breathe and I had to call an ambulance. I didn't know what it was. Um, I went through a period of having panic attacks and now on the rare occasion I get one, I'm like, come on, I am ready. I'm gonna beat you because I'm determined. I'm not letting it win. Um, I think that, um, I think we all have got the ability to have anxiety. I think it's all underlying. It's like we've all got mental health. Um, I think it's about really learning how to manage it and learning what the things are that you need. Like I explain, there's a great analogy. Again, I didn't come up with it, but um, that we're all like a glass and the glass, you can't make it any bigger. And in the glass, you've got um, genetics. So I'm female, I'm 44, I've got brown hair. That is what it is. I could obviously dye my hair, but you get my point. That's very little of who we are. Most of who we are is life, career, relationship, finances, family, everything. And we get to the point that when our glass is full, we basically lose the plot. So what happens is something as simple as burning the toast, if your glass is full, means you cannot cope. And it has nothing to do with burning the toast. It's to do with all of these life pressures that are building up until you just can't deal with it anymore. So one of the things that I really work with people is that how do we make the glass bigger so that we can cope more? And that's through things like eating good food, clean food, because the more processed you put in, your body doesn't like it, exercise, good sleep, stress management. And all of these things are basically building up our resilience. And the more that you have this virtual toolkit of things to go to when you start to feel anxiety coming on, the more that you just then don't let it overtake you going, oh my God, anxiety is coming. What am I going to do? Because you're like, I know what I'm going to deal with it. So I don't know that it ever really goes away, um, but I think we learn how to manage it. Um, and I think people have definitely beat that. Right. Have we got any other questions? <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that. Aaron's had to zoom off. Clearly more Zoom calls. <laughs> But yeah, if anyone's got any other questions, or as I said, please reach out to me. Um, go and follow me on LinkedIn and send me a message that way. Um, I post daily hints and tips. I'm going to be talking about sleep this week, which is quite interesting. You just mentioned sleep there. A way to tackle insomnia has been to go down to my study for half an hour and write notes. I tell you what, Russell, you've absolutely nailed it. That's exactly the right thing to do. Get stuff out of your head. It lets your mind rest for the night without you having to be worried that you're going to forget stuff. Oh, thank you. for. I love that you're on my Facebook group. Um, so yeah, please, whichever thing works for you. But most importantly, I'm just going to drop my email address on here. Because um, if anyone doesn't want to go on any of those social things, um, but wants to drop me a little note because they've got any questions at all about sleep, stress, alcohol, partners, whatever it might be, just give me a shout. And Jack, thank you so much for inviting me and me being the first one on here. No worries, it's been amazing. I think it's kicked off the week really, really well. Um, it'd be good to get everyone's thoughts. I think they're coming through thick and fast anyway. So yeah, it's been really good, Michelle. Thanks a lot for that. Much appreciated. You are so welcome. Thank you everyone for coming and spending the time. I know there's a lot of stuff in there that I've covered off, but when you've got a mixture of people, I try to make sure everyone has one thing to take away. So I try to make it broad, but also real. Thanks, Michelle. You are so welcome. I will cut off now. You guys can all go and get on with your day. And Jack, I look forward to speaking to you soon. See you later. Take care. Bye.